angle beam calibration doing a contact test using the IIW type 1 reference block <clears throat> this is the IIW type 1 block today I'm using an Epic 1000i from Olympus I'm using a AWS wedge 45 degree angle two and a quarter megahertz transducer and the IIW type 1 block now with the IIW type 1 block here's our zero marking uh, machine on the block we will have a 4 inch radius and then we will get a 10 inch radius oh pardon me a 9 inch radius sorry about that a 4 and a 9 inch reflector um, the reason I say 10 inches I set my range at 10 inches my sound path I want to set it 10 inches so that I can encompass both the 4 and the 9 inch radius that I will get with the IIW type 1 block and uh, we always want to make sure that we put coupling between our transducer and our wedge so that we will get the energy into the part uh, like I said I set my range at 10 inches for the type 1 uh, IIW block and the velocity I set it at 1.28 uh, pardon me 0.128 inches per microsecond which is your standard carbon steel uh, mild steel uh, shear velocity the zero is set at zero I'm going to let my uh, RL Cal take care of uh, the, the, the zero in the wedge um, and remember our receiver and our pulser we want to make sure that we set our pulser um, at 2.25 megahertz in the case of the Olympus 2.27 megahertz but we always want to make sure that our um, that our uh, frequency is set uh, matches our transducer um, receiver I have filtering standard filtering and uh, full wave rectification and my filter is set at 0.5 to 4 megahertz kind of in the middle um, the two and a quarter will, will uh, fall right in the middle and our trig function um, I set my angle at 45 degrees because that's what my wedge is and in this uh, calibration process we will measure our angle so let's begin by coupling the transducer to the IIW block it's coupled up I see two reflectors let me take some gain down reduce by DB that is my 4 inch radius that is my 9 inch radius what I want to do is I want to uh, find my beam index point so I'm going to take out some energy here reduce by DB I'm going to hit my peak memory and I'm going to move my transducer back and forth and we will see right there I'm in the middle of my curve of my traced uh, peak memory that is the maximum energy I'm getting back that's the sweet spot where this transducer where this wedge uh, works with this block and what I have I, there's a zero mark machined on this machined IAW block I will transfer that zero mark to a piece of masking tape that I have on my wedge and that marks the beam index point of this wedge so to calibrate I want to take my gate move my gate over to capture that four inch radius I want to do second function auto 80 take the 8% full screen height I want to press F5 which is my auto cal button and I'm going to cal mode is sound path and it has cal velocity and cal zero the first thing I want to do is cal zero press that button and I have to tell the uh, tester that it is looking at it in the gate it is captured a four inch sound path so I change that to four inches and here we go four inches hit the check button I can hit it here or here 
it will store that value. Now I want to move my gate over and as you can see there's a dialog box over here during calibration it will say CAL. When I'm done calibrating that CAL will go away. Let me move the gate over. Oh sorry um, uh, that's that's my gain. Let me hit the gate, move the gate over to hover over that nine inch radius. Second auto 80. Take the eight percent full screen height. Now I'll press P2, which is my cal velocity. And I have to tell the machine that it is looking at a nine inch sound path. Whoops. Nine inches. And by hitting the check, it is calculate. Calculating. Calibration is done. You see the cal has disappeared. Let me take my gate and slide it over that nine inch radius. My sound path is nine inches. Come over and capture the four inch reflector. Take that to auto 80 and it reads four inches. So at this point I'm calibrated. I have my beam index point uh, marked down here. Now the next thing I want to do is let's measure the angle, the actual angle of my transducer. And on the IIW Type 1 block we have a scale here that goes from 35 degrees to 65 degrees on this side. And on the other side there is a uh, there is an 80, 70 to 80 degree and on this particular block there is a 60 degree to 75 degree. So there's several ways that you can measure the angle but since I'm using a 45 degree transducer I'm going to couple it and right here on the scale I have from 35 degrees to 65 degrees I'm going to put my transducer basically in the 45 degree area and what it is doing it is shooting uh, that sound at 45 degrees is coming down to this radius here in this large hole and what happens we want to um, you can see a reflector I want to hit my peak memory and I want to again move back and forth and find where is my maximum energy? Right here. I'm in the middle of my curve. Right there. They turn off the peak uh, memory. And so at that point, um, that is where the maximum energy is coming back to my transducer. I want to look at the uh, beam index point that I marked on my wedge. Compare it to the scale. And in this case, it reads... Um, with this block looks like about 44 and one half degree. So what we want to do with that information, my actual wedge is 44 and a half degrees. I want to come to my trig function. I want to put in the angle to 40 from 45 degrees to 44.5 degrees. So what that will do, that will give me a very accurate calculation um, on my trig functions. And then again, of course, when you're uh, doing an inspection, you will want to, uh, in your trig function, you want to put the thickness of your part in. That way you'll get all uh, the correct information. Last thing I want to do is, again, show how um, we set the reference. And on the IIW uh, Type 1 block, we have a uh, point, uh, 60 thousandths diameter through hole that is 0.6 inches below the surface. That is used to set our reference sensitivity. Now um, let me change my range down to 2 inches because 10 inches is, is far too much and uh, let me take this down here to 2 inches and uh, she is going very slow today. I don't know why there, come on. And 
and my, oops, let's see. Uh, no, my range is on the course setting. It just is slow. So uh, let's just have to be a little bit patient because I'm gonna set the range to two inches um, because I wanna use as much of the screen as I possibly can. And normally I don't know why it is uh, so slow to respond, but for some reason, this, uh, this particular tester is uh, in very slow mode today. And like I said, I am in a course uh, setting. All right, good grief. Half hour later, I'm at two and a half inches. Let's stick with that just for simplicity's sake. So um, I can see, like, put a little bit more gain in here. I can see this signal. There's that hole. There's that side drill hole. Um, let me let me take my gate and bring my gate over to capture that. Oops. There we are. Let me take that to auto 80 and let's look at the peak memory and um, I want to peak this out again this that's a reflector from the side drilled hole that's 0.6 inches deep and um, there it is that's my reference point now typically in AWS uh, change the gain uh, typically it's a 40 to 60 I believe according to code 40 to 60 um, percent full screen height for your reference level. I just set my full screen height at 60. That is my reference level. A 60 degree full screen height, 58.5 dB to to get that um, that much energy back from this hole. So that is the typical reference level. Now, depending on your code. Uh, the AWS code will tell you how much dB because we always scan hot, meaning we always add dB. We want to pick up small reflectors, but then we want to come back to our reference gain in order to do evaluation to see how does our indication or our defect, how does it compare to the energy we're getting back from this uh, reference hole. So that concludes the uh, calibration and the reference sensitivity using the IIW Type 1 reference block with a 4 and a 9 inch radius.